What about classical works, that is, uh, ancient works or works that are very common that everyone has uh, cited before or, or is just commonly known? These are often called classical works. In this case, you can use the year of the version because there's been so many translations or versions. Or you can try to use the year of the version and the original date of the publication. For example, this is a Greek philosopher, Aristotle. Here we have Aristotle, comma, translated 1931, or James, 1890, and the translation is 1983. Those are going to be more uncommon, especially for scientific research or uh, humanities research related to business, but it'd be much more common in research in uh, language literature area. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, source information. When you cite a source, you can indicate the page number, the chapter, the figure, the table, or the equation. So for example, when I'm going to cite something specific, here is Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. That is not an author because the author in this case is not a person but an organization. So I go ahead and cite that. Comma the year and then comma P10, which means a single page. 1P means page 10. Uh, one, one P means one page, and 10 means the 10th page. Shamamura, 1989, chapter 3. So in this case, I'm citing the ideas that are all inside chapter 3. So it's probably a book from 1989. What if I have personal communication, such as emails, letters, or conversations, or memos? We can go ahead and put that into our papers also. So for example here, T.K. Lutz, this is the person who sent me something. What did he send me? He sent me a personal communication. So I go ahead and I write personal communication, comma, what's the month, April, 18, comma, and year. And here you can see that the month goes first and then the day goes second. Month, day, comma, 2001, and that's the year. So Pay attention because in different styles, this can be quite different. So in APA, it's month, day, comma, year. Figure this out here. VG Nagin, Personal Communication, September 28, 1998. Again, month, day, year, with a comma. And here we have the person's name, and we're all inside the parentheses. Here we're outside the parentheses, which is okay, because that's the author of it. That's the source of the information, the person. Lastly, we have something called the DOI, or the Digital Object Identifier. And the Digital Object Identifier is something that's kind of new. And it's a way for us to cite information that is findable or discoverable on the internet or through databases. And of course the idea here is we want to have a number so that we can find information in the future and that location does not change. Now it used to be everything is on paper, the paper is bound in a book, the book is put in a library, it's put on a shelf, and people in different libraries around the world would be able to find it because it has the same name, the same volume number, the same issue number. That's still true but because everything can now be converted to digital, we would like to have a location we can find these. And that's called the Digital Object Identifier. Now, we're going to look at that a little bit later when we look at some examples in the reference list. You won't be using that so much in the citations, which is inside your, your writing, inside your sentences. But you possibly could in a special case. Okay, so that kind of wraps up those rules. Again, the APA is kind of overwhelming sometimes. In fact, often when I'm doing the APA, it's like, whoa, my head's exploding, all of these rules, right? The thick book of rules of APA. But it actually can feel good because everything you need to cite has a rule. You just need to check it out and make sure you're following the right one. Don't make it up, follow the rule. Good luck with your APA references.